Welcome back to the Melbourne RACV Marine Boat Show. I'm now with Dean Howard. Now Dean is the owner of a company called FabDoc. And Dean, tell us what FabDoc is. It, it, this is an amazing thing if you've got a boat, so you really should pay attention. Uh, FabDoc is a, what we term an in-water dry docking system. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple system that we developed over the last nine years using the best components in the world and it's a simple case of just driving your boat into our, our product and it's all 12 volt pumping up the back end and it pumps the water out mm. so after a, a nine year development process what we have is a, is a one piece welded unit with no metal parts no moving parts and it just simply dries your boat 100 percent of the time you know it's fully automatic and keeps your boat dry right now if you've got your boat sitting in the water it's just going to accumulate weed and oh, yep. But potentially worms, if you've got wooden bugs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this, so your product is designed basically to protect that investment, isn't it? Exactly. So if you own a, you know, any any boat that and it's going to live in a marina or in the water somewhere, as we all know, if you've owned that boat for more than a year and you've been through that pain of doing the haul out, the cleaning, the anodes, the servicing, then you understand, you know, the time and the investment required to keep that boat serviceable. So yep. what we say is. You can either leave that boat, sit in the water every year and do all that process and spend that amount of money every year, or if you purchase a fab dock, within about three or four years, what you'll save in that maintenance process and fuel savings and all the rest, you'll pay off your fab dock and your fab dock will last 10 to 15 years. Yep. So after that first three or four years, you've paid your fab dock off, it just makes boating, it just saves your fortune. Yeah, okay. So there's been efforts, there's other products around, people have tried all sorts of things to avoid getting weed on the underneath yep. of their boat and yep. you'll see the ones that lift out of the water yep. And, yep. and that sort of thing. Your product's dramatic, dramatically different to that, isn't it? Because yep. it, the boat stays in the water, yes. but you're basically putting a barrier on the hull yeah, to yeah. stop the weed growing. Yes. So can you just lead us through exactly what it is? Yeah, so you know, like all boaties, um, I, you know, I had a boat nine years ago that wasn't anti-foul, I didn't want to anti-foul it. And uh, so I looked at all those sort of systems. You know, how do I get the boat out of the water to keep it clean and stop all the stuff growing on it? So I tried all different things and I looked at the available things, which are expensive and, you know, if things go wrong, you know, if they go wrong big time, your boat's six foot out of, the, out of the water. So, and then, you know, I tried my own little ideas and then it just struck me one day, just like a lightning bolt. You know, it's like, it's that lateral thinking. I don't need to get the boat out of the water. I just need to get the water away from the boat. Mm. And that's when we came up with our in-water docking system. Mm. And uh, it just, it's, it's a fraction of the price of anything that lifts your boat out of the water. Much safer, your boat can't roll off and sink. Mm -hmm. And uh, marinas love them because it's, again, less liability. It's all self-contained, it's 12 volt. And it's almost, you know, as is a, a 300 mil or a 12 inch tube all around your boat with the floor. Yep. So now you've got a 12 inch buffer or a 300 mil buffer all around your boat. So yep. in cyclone areas or, or areas prone to storms, you've now got a buffer between you and the marina. Right. Um, so, yeah, oh, so the, the actual, um, what do you call them, pontoons? The tubes yeah, that go, because yep. you, you're basically driving into uh, a top yeah, of a the horseshoe, horseshoe yeah, exactly. of yep. tubes, yep. rubber tubes with yep. air inside them. Exactly, yep. And then the back section pumps up. Pumps up, yep. So you're completely enclosed. Correct, yep. And then there's water still in that section that gets pumped out, doesn't Correct. it? Correct, yes. So yeah. the, the rubber yeah, is actually it's being sucked up against exactly. the hull. Yeah. Vacuum forms around your boat. Right. So there's no way any, oh, any weed, any no, grub, anything. It's a hundred percent dry in there. And one of the many things we've had to invent, and, and we've had numerous patents now on the fab dock. And one of the most important ones, as good as the fab dock is, was a reliable pumping system. Yep. And uh, so about four years ago, uh, I invented you know, our own float switch system, which is a little computer module. And because our system's 12 volt, we connect to the house battery on the boat it sits up in your engine bay, this little module, and that controls the water pumps and the air pumps. Right. So if it rains or you wash your boat, it'll pump that water out as well. Right. So as, as long as your boat's sitting in that fab dock, it's gonna be dry. Right. So I'll just come back to that, but so you've got this ring of pontoons around your boat. Yes. And because this wasn't something I'd actually thought about before, and I know yeah. we've spoken a few times about the product. Yeah. Uh, it's act acting as a cushion against the sides of your exactly. pen. Exactly, yeah. Right. So one of the many things is, 
Um, because it's the inflatable tube and it, it makes it easy to berth your boat, the berthing feature on the Fab Dock is enormous. In fact, a third of our customers have told us the number one reason for buying the Fab Dock is to help them park their boats. Right. So you've got this 300 mil fender all the way around it. Yep. So now the stress normally starts yeah, anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour before you come home. Yep. You know, because the wife is starting to stress because it's normally the wife's job or the girlfriend's job while the husband's driving, she has to run around the boat, dropping the fenders out, yep. get them in the right spot, getting the ropes ready. Yep. And then as they're getting closer and closer, and we always laugh with the husband and the wife standing next to us, you know, the husband's going, you know, he thinks he's this far from the jetty and he's really like this far from the jetty and he's yep. yelling at the wife to jump and yep. she's going, oh, I'm not jumping that far and yelling at her because he's got the wrong rope and the wrong cleat. It's just, <laughs> so in fact, in our boat shows, we have a sign saying, not only will Fab Doc save your boat, it'll save your marriage. Yeah. yeah. So now it's just a case of all by yourself, no fenders, no ropes, bouncing your boat Strain. in. And, uh, and yeah, and then in that storm situation, you've got that, that ring of, of inflatable fender around your boat. Yep. So it takes the buffer out of, uh, out of the, any banging against the marina. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually relating a little bit too much to how you describe <laughs> your partner running around trying to put fenders in. It is stressful. <laughs> Definitely stressful yeah. in a relationship. So, all right. So the next thing, I guess, is um, the pump system that you talked about. Yep. So that's being uh, operated by the power from within the boat. You don't exactly. need to have shore power to make exactly. that work. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's a, a, an important difference. So, yeah. you know, I'm a bit of a neat sort of person. So a fab dock is completely self-contained. There's nothing dangling in the water. There's no pipes or wires dangling in the water. And from a marina's point of view, we're not plugged into their power. Yep. We like to think, you know, environmentally, and we'll get to that yep. later, but, you know, no antifoul, no chemicals. And then, in fact, ours can run off a solar panel. So oh, really? if you have a solar panel on your on your you know, on, on your boat, topping up the your battery, well we're taking the power from that battery. So we're basically running through the shore through your solar panels yeah. um, or shore power, uh, and that feeds the power to our fab dock. Yep. So we have okay. 12 volt pumps, a, a double system down there, uh, independently wired, and that pumps all the water out and keeps your boat dry for as long as that boat's sitting in. Yeah. How do you get around the fact that a, you've got the propeller at the back of the boat, and you've got this system which is sucking up the material yep. around the, yep. the hull, yep. Yep. would the propeller potentially cut a hole in your... Right. Yeah, yeah, good point. So one of the many design cues of a fab dock is where that, that back end drops down. Mm. And so that, that point we call the drop point where it drops down, that will change depending on the drive of the boat. So on a stern drive or an outboard boat, we drop it just in front of the transom. So as that drops down, we're a long way back from the propeller. Yep. On shaft drives or IPS drives boats, we drop that, that drop point moves further forward, so it's always dropping in front of the running gear. Yep. So when you drive your boat in, you drive it in until you get to the end, can't yep. go any further, well the floor's dropped in front of any running gear, so you yep. don't chop it up. Yep. And the material is a very, very strong material, and we build special pockets for shaft drives or stern drives type of boat, so as that back end comes up, those pockets come up around the drives and they're all specially reinforced and specially designed. So as that wraps around the propeller and the rudders and, and all the sharp stuff, it, yeah, it doesn't cut them up. It doesn't so. cut through. Hmm. All right, now you've talked about the uh, environmental hmm. benefits. Now this is becoming probably more important virtually oh. every year, isn't it? Yes. So yeah. tell us, what's the advantage there? Oh, there's. Um, Unfortunately, Australia's lagging a little bit behind on that, but hopefully we'll catch up soon. But you know, countries overseas, you know, America, Washington State, California State, uh, have really done a lot of study on how poisonous and toxic antifoul is to our marine life. Mm. I mean, obviously it works by killing stuff that comes close to it or tries to attach to it. So you know, it's not a great thing to be pouring in our world's oceans. Mm. So, so as a company, we count every boat we get in a fab dock is another 20, 30 kilos of poison every year not going in the world's oceans. Mm. So we're now working closely with the New Zealand government and these governments in California um, who are looking at alternatives rather than putting poison on boats to keep the boat clean. So um, we've met with them a few times, going back in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we'll become the standard product to replace antifoul on boats. So in marinas, you know, the numbers in America are huge. They have marinas with four and a half thousand boats. Yep. You know, the, the volume of, of, of antifoul and, and the poisons and toxins in that antifoul in this one marina is, is, is obviously just Massive. killed everything for miles around there. Yep. So to, to reverse that process and stop the use of that, they needed an alternative like a fab dock that, that boat owners can now use rather than putting antifoul on the boats. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, that's a, 
That's a significant issue, isn't it? It's a huge yeah. issue and it's something that's understated. And I've spoken to many Bodies that over the years and we just assume, well, that's just, it's a given. That's what you do. If you own a boat in the water, you, every year you put antifoul on mm. and it's just this magic black paint that keeps your boat clean. Yep. Well, go and read the warning label on that stuff. It's, it's highly toxic and cancerous yep. and, and not great for the marine environment. So, yep. yeah, if we can replace that with something that has, is, is chemical free yep. and uh, does a better job at all that, then that's a win-win for everyone concerned. Yep. How long does it take from the minute you drive into your fab dock to be able to get off the boat and walk away? I know it probably changes with the size of the boat maybe. Oh, but not, not really, it's pretty much the same. So, you know, the, the little 12 volt air pump that blows up that rear end once yep. you come in, most boats will take three or four minutes and then you just plug the pumps in and go home. So you could actually be walking away from your boat in four or five minutes. As it's pumping the water out? Yeah, because it's automatic. Once the fab dock's dry, the pumps will turn off automatically. Then if it rains, they'll pump that out. So yep. if you're in a real hurry, you can get out there in four or five minutes. Yep. Uh, in fact, I actually say to, to people as part of the fab dock benefit is, once you've driven your boat in there, all you need is one forward rope onto a back cleat. You can actually be out of there in five seconds. Yep. So if you've got an emergency on your boat, Rather than getting your boat back to the marina and still having to rope it up properly, mm. you can just jam it in the fab dock, put one forward rope on the back cleat, and you can actually take whatever person's in emergency or whatever hurry yeah. you're in, you could be out of there in like five seconds. Yeah. And then you can come back any time you like and pump it up and, and yeah. pump it up then. So yeah. five minutes since she's done and dusted, you can leave it for a year. Or if you need to be out of there in a hurry, you can actually yeah. make it quick. So Okay. Well then, I guess the, the big question is, how much is it going to cost? What's the, is there a range or...? Certainly, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we learnt in the first five years when we custom built every fab dock in the world, we then developed a universal product. And that universal product now caters for outboard or stern drive boats up to about 44 feet. So that's reduced the price dramatically. So now we don't have to measure and design and custom build every fab dock. Right. So, you know, so now here in Australia, you know, the, um, uh, we can get a boat up to about 20, 22 feet mm -hmm. into a Fab Dock 1 for about 7990 mm -hmm. and then, uh, And then even for boats, say, you know, 32 foot twin stern drive cabin cruiser is still only about, around about $13,000. Right. And what sort of life expectancy? Oh, so we've been working on that. So we use this best material in the world with, with as much UV rating as possible. So at the moment we're getting about 10 years yep. in Australian conditions, knowing that Australia has the worst UV ratings in the world. Yep. Um, so our overseas customers in America and Europe are getting longer than that, you know, up to 15 years. Yep. We've actually got brand new material that we've been testing now for the last 12 months, which gets us 30% more life, Right. 30% more UV ratings on it. So. Yeah, everything is getting better and better. The pumps are getting better, our wiring systems, our connectors. So it's a continual process. Yep. Um, but uh, the customers that, that have bought their fab dogs eight or nine years ago, honestly, more, one of my favourite customers, uh, Craig up in Horizon Shores with a big 38-foot uh, Mustang, he's just, he rings me all the time. He goes, Dean, he says, oh, I know. He's got some big block petrol engines in there. Yep. Every time I go out, I save $100 in fuel alone yep. just because my boat's clean. Yeah. You know, on top of all my maintenance savings and nanone savings. So over the last nine years, he's, he's saved $20,000 right. or more. And, and so it, okay, so that's yeah. the proof in the pudding. Exactly. It's going to save you money in the, in oh. the relatively short term. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I'm a keelboat guy, I'm a yacht yeah. <laughs> cruiser or racer, yeah, yeah. can you help me out with that? Because you know I want the bottom of my boat yeah. to be <laughs> so clean that I yeah. can beat everybody else in a yacht race. Perfect, yeah, yeah. Um, this, you know, when you get the, the logic behind a fab dock design, and I've explained this to a few uh, sailing guys, but mm. it's basically that the floor would, would just would, would snug around the hull of the boat yep. and then we build a special pocket for the keel. Yep. Now we have, a, we have a, a philosophy in the company that we can, we can solve any problem, we can mm -hmm. design anything. Um, I haven't quite got my head around a wing keel yet, yep. but I say to sailors for a straight keel or a bulb keel, no problem. So we have the special pocket yep. with a framework at the bottom and a special weight and a, and a secondary pump down there to pump that water out. Right. So yeah, definitely keel boats and, the, and obviously the back end, we build a special pocket for the rudder. Yep. So it'll take a bit of design work and a bit of custom work. Yep. But for the, for the racing guys that want to get that extra couple of, yeah. extra knot or two out of it to beat their friends, yep. then that's definitely the way to go. It can be done. Mm. Well mate, that's awesome. Um, it sounds like you're just getting better and better with this product. 
Uh, I guess one other point that's worth touching on is, and I've seen your product, everything's soft. There's no hard plastic mm. or metal bits that are going to damage the hull of my right. boat, are they? No, exactly. You know, one of the one of the many little design cues is the fact that even after nine years, and we have some really cool internal systems to make it all work and, and some really cool things, but the, the final product that the customer sees is a one-piece welded unit, no metal parts, no moving parts. Yep. It's simple, it's got to live there for 10 to 15 years and do its job, yep. so it's, it's low maintenance, it adds to your boating life, it doesn't make it more complicated, it just sits there and keeps your boat yep. dry. Yep. So why wouldn't you get one? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, every person who sat in that seat has had to tell us a boating story. It right. doesn't have to be you, it could be someone you know. So what have you got for us? I know I didn't uh, give you much warning, but... Uh, all right, let's, uh, we won't talk about any fab doc stories because I might embarrass some of my customers, <laughs> but uh, uh, one of my favourite little stories is, is a time once for those that, that go boating up in Brisbane, one of the, the biggest boat ramps is Manly Harbour, when you're heading over to Morton Island. So and it's always the mad rush and late in the afternoon, everyone's trying to get, get their boats out. So I've left my boat sort of just perched on the side of the beach there with my little girlfriend at the time hanging on the boat for me. Now at Manly, it's a, it's a great uh, weekend tradition that uh, the locals all wander down there with some food and some snacks and they sit on what they build is almost a stadium and oh. they sit there and they they have a good laugh every morning and afternoon watching people come and go at the boat ramp. So, oh. so there's about 20 or 30 guys sitting there eating and drinking. So I've left my girlfriend there to hang on the boat while I go and get the car like we all do. So I'm running to get the car, grab the car, have to queue up, you know, finally get my t turn on the ramp, back it down and I'm looking around and the boat's gone. Yep. I'm thinking, what's, what's happened here? And I look out and there it is about 50 metres out to sea. My girlfriend's still hanging on the, <laughs> hanging on the front out in the water. And I look at all these guys who's there sitting watching, they're all laughing. I said, so not one of you decided to help? And they went, no, nah, we sit here and laugh. <laughs> and I went, great. So you yeah, swim out there, rescue her, rescue the boat, drive it back on and get out of there. So <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's my trailer boat story. Yeah, uh, OK. That's a good story. You're right, boat ramps are a form of entertainment for some people. <laughs> form of divorce of, for other people. Yeah, a lot of bad things happen at boat ramps, aren't they? Okay, mate, thank you very much for your time. It's, uh, there's, there's still at least four hours to go, five hours to go before the boat show finishes. So people have got plenty of time to come and see you and talk to you about this product yep. and pick your brains about how it could work for them. Um, I expect there's quite a lot of sailors around that would really, really love to talk to you about how you can help them beat their competitors. <laughs> yep. So. Um, so if you're interested and you've got a few hours, come on down, find Dean at FabDoc and you can answer all those questions, can't you? After, after nine years, you've pretty yep. much <laughs> answered every one of those questions. Many times. So mate, great, thank you very much. Thank you, mate.